I don't think you're in. I'm not. I'm not gonna stay. Here. <laughs> it is recording, but no. It's not. I'm gonna need to come in this corner, but. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Why don't we ever exposure's like good. Cushions are set. You look beautiful. Brady set. Boy, yeah. girl, boy, girl, girl, boy, girl, boy. Yeah. All right, let's uh, do it. Happy, happy, happy Friday, Delos Tribe. We're coming to you almost live from the beautiful and extremely rugged Dominica today. We really wanted to do a live broadcast, but unfortunately the internet was not cooperating. So we're trying to do the next best thing. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions that were submitted to us on Patreon by our lovely patrons, and we're going to go through these today and do our best to answer them for you. And then Senior Brady's gonna run somewhere and try and find enough internet to get it uploaded. Yeah. With any luck, hopefully we'll have it uploaded today. We'll see, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. <laughs> uh, so the first thing I think we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what we've been up to for mm -hmm. the last few months. What have yep. you been up to, Senior? Well, let's see, It's we we're supposed to have some time off kind of away from the boat and kind of chilling out with our family and we ended up flying around quite a bit when we were in the states we ended up going to Svalbard we did um, a lot of filming there with Eastbjorn and the guys from 59 59 North and we're currently working on all that footage so everyone that's asking what's going on with the Svalbard stuff we're gonna do like some really cool standalone episodes that we'll kind of get into a little bit later because somebody asked a question about that um, so that was really cool experience. We came back to Grenada, how long ago? Three months ago? Think about, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like three months ago, and then we were straight into working on Delos, so working hard for about a month, and there's a lot of questions about that too. So we're going to get into what we did on Delos uh, during that month. And then after that, we um, invited some guys down from Drenched. Some strange. <laughs> There's a lot of inside jokes going around. Um, we met them in Grenada last time. You probably saw them in some of the episodes that went out when we were there with Captain Rick Moore. And uh, they're into scuba diving and they're into. You get, come over here, guys. You have to explain. <laughs> come in front of the camera. Come in front of the camera. Get in here. Get in here. I'll, I'll, I'll scoot over. over. Right. Everybody, if you don't know, this is our new family. Meet Jordan Hola. and Nate. What's up? Hi, guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're, uh, we're Jordan and Nate from Drenched, and we are super stoked on scuba, if you don't know that already. And we have been diving our brains out the last uh, couple months with these guys. Uh, currently, uh, we're in Dominica, which is just a beautiful green island with amazing, amazing diving. So we've been getting into that, and it's also the sp uh, sperm whale capital of the world. So. In an awesome turn of events, we get to go snorkeling with sperm whales uh, this next week. So we're really stoked on that. Um, if you want to be more in the know or know what's going on more currently, uh, you want some behind the scenes action, we definitely recommend that you download the Patreon app and there you can see our patron lenses, which are uncut, unedited, behind the scenes, and we will, we've been doing them all this last week, so if you haven't seen those, you should definitely get it. And uh, we will make sure that we're doing some little lenses um, on our sperm whale swim. For those that don't have Instagram, it's like stories, right? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Nate, seconds. why don't you tell him your nickname? <laughs> I'm Nasty. <laughs> He's got a couple in there. A couple of nicknames. Nasty. We started out with Nate Dog, which fit. Yeah. Nasty, Nasty Nate. Nate Dog, Nasty the, Nate. the uh, Nanny Slayer. I think that's the full... <laughs> Nasty Nate Dog, the Nanny Slayer is the full <laughs> nickname. Slash Cruiser Mom Connoisseur. <laughs> Slash Mel. <laughs> out nowhere, Nate. I got a bunch of them. The, the one dive instructor that runs out of air and gets lost on almost every dive. <laughs> but he's a hell of a dive I'm here to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, Nate. Really? I feel like Nate pretty much covered it all, but yeah. Yeah? yeah. We're just excited um, to be here. These guys have been doing yeah. an awesome job filming, like Jordan especially. Every time you see her, she has a camera in her hand, so the, the episodes... <laughs> or two or three. Or two. Yeah, <laughs> so the episodes coming up are going to be girl. really good. <laughs> You've actually been editing your first Dallas episode, too. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's ready, so I think that will be out, I think, in like, yeah. timing-wise, maybe like a month or so. Yeah, We'd have to like look that. at the calendar of the lineups, but uh, you'll be soon getting to see, like, when we first came on board and 
hear some new voiceover voices than what you've been used to for the last <laughs> year or whatever. It's going to be good. <laughs> I'm excited for it. And we're excited to be here, and uh, we're going to go hide behind the camera again and make sure everything's in focus and looking good. All right. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> All right. So, Nasty Nate Dog. Uh, first question from Jeff McClure. Where are you guys heading next? Are you going to go to the Bahamas, up the U.S. East Coast, or west into the Caribbean? Uh, Kaza, what do you think? Yeah, so we are now, like Nasty Nate said, in Dominica. <laughs> and uh, I think the plan for the next few months is just to go really slow, keep the wind behind us, and just slowly kind of creep up the Caribbean. Um, we don't have that many plans of like what, especially like what countries we're gonna go to, or how fast, or what places we're gonna go to. But um, I'm just really excited to kind of take it slow. Like mom is coming out in a few weeks. <laughs> it's gonna be like Christmas and New Year's. Uh, you guys, I know, have been talking about like kite surfing yeah. and maybe in Antigua or something. Yeah. So we have a lot of cool stuff and I think just in a few months, like in the end of the season, we're going to end up in Florida, closer to you guys' family and the plans kind of stop there. Like we don't, we haven't <laughs> really discussed further than that. So yeah, that's the next few months. How, how far is Florida away from us right now? I don't even know. It's, it's not less, that it's far. It's less than a thousand it's miles. It's not that far. Yeah. But and I, I do know it will be the first time that Delos is back in the U.S. Yeah. since I left in 2009. So it's uh, yeah. it will be almost 10 years, nine years and change or something. That's going to be a hell of a party. Yeah. That's <laughs> going to be a good party. And our family is in Florida, around Miami, Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Orlando. So our parents will actually get to come on the boat for a bit, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. See our brother. And uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Good things. But we have a little bit of distance and a lot of time, so we're going to take our time. But we want to be there before the hurricane season. Yes. It's kind of the plan. Yes. Um, yeah, cool. Anything else? Did that answer that? I think yeah. so. Pretty yeah. good. Sounds pretty good. We're going north and west until we hit Florida before the wind starts blowing hard. Yeah. That's about all I know. Okay, this next one is pretty cool. It's from uh, TJ Denaway. And TJ? Uh, TJ and Shayla actually joined us in Grenada. They were one of our patron sailing contest winners and so they're very interested as to when their video is coming out. Uh, I'm curious as to when Friday's video is now going to be released. Uh, I have a good answer for you, it's going to be next Friday. Uh, so one week from today, so if you guys want to plan like a party or something with your friends, get together, wear your Delos shirts and drink some beer, that's your day. Um, also curious, like many others, as to future plans, destinations. Uh, we kind of covered that. We'd like to see you go up to the Great Lakes. That could be really cool. It sounds like interesting sailing. I have no idea. Crazy yeah, diving. The U.S. Yeah. East Coast sounds fascinating too. Just to explore some of the U.S. would be really cool. I've, it's probably the country that I've seen the least of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's out of all the ones we've been to. Silly. Um, I personally think it would be cool to see you visit some places that are so close to many of us and also fairly unknown as sailing cruising destinations. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely correct and cool. Uh, there's, there's one thing that he also said uh, about the videos, uh, and I'll kind of touch on this a little bit, um, about when the next video uh, will be coming out. Uh, and I don't know if, how many of you remember this, but back in 2015, when we first arrived in Madagascar, uh, we kind of made a pledge that we were going to work as hard as humanly possible to make one video per week uh, to get more current on the footage. And we, um, we were a year and a half behind. <laughs> I wouldn't say behind. Well, not behind, behind, but we were releasing time, episodes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is no big deal, but yeah. we wanted, yeah. But after uh, it took us three years <laughs> but we've finally done it um, I'm very happy to say that as of like two weeks ago we're actually working on footage that we just filmed uh, and so it's quite a different perspective for us because instead of looking back you know a few months at the past different countries or destinations we've been we're working on stuff on places and people that we've just met 
uh, yeah. which is interesting. It changes and, it and cool, and it, it does change things because it gives us some opportunities to do some other things as well. Um, for example, more uh, Q and A's, more uh, live sessions. We're gonna have a little bit more flexibility to throw in bonus videos about uh, boat work, boat projects. Um, Brady's got some cool ones, uh, just a, a short diving video, and yeah. we actually got to sink a boat uh, yeah. in Grenada that he's working on right now. And we're just gonna be able to play around a little bit more with it and have some fun, and I think that's cool. Yeah. So along with the the normal episodes that we'll be releasing, we're gonna be doing bonus stuff all the time, which is exciting. Gives us more time to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm stoked. Yeah. yeah. Fridays like this special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So next one uh, from Kernis. C-U-R-N-I-S-S. -S. I have a few questions I would like to ask. Where do you see yourselves in five and ten years? Any thoughts of children? And how that would play into the Delos lifestyle? Much love. It's got a K next yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very hard question. Like, where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Um, I can definitely say that I see myself and hopefully all of us <laughs> like on living on a boat still like I can't see ourselves like oh when we arrive in Florida we're gonna stop or anything like that like I see this you know project and this journey continuing where we're gonna go it's super hard to say right I mean I haven't been to the South Pacific we can go like I mean Patagonia seems pretty cool like it's so many different ways you can take it right uh, and yeah like family I think even though that happens I can't see ourselves stop stopping and hopefully not changing too much like just incorporate it and have fun with it and see what happens yeah I don't know why why you stop and it can be a, a fantastic lifestyle and way to bring up a kid and yeah. all the cruiser kids that we've met have been like so cool just and I mean, the, this question too, he asked about like... What's uh, Anthony, Anthony Tatum? You wanna read it? No, you can read it. Not very good at reading. <laughs> <laughs> not very good at reading. She's good. <laughs> Just not an English girl. <laughs> What's your opinion of the sailing families you've met along your journeys? Uh, we just had our first daughter, Maya, and would like to raise her on a sailboat while cruising. Did the kids get enough social time, good education, uh, seem pretty average or above average? Thanks. And I mean, especially in Grenada, like we met a huge group of like kind of cruising kids and like uh, that were all kind of sailing together or somewhat and a lot of homeschooling and I think, I mean, it seems cool. I mean, people are happy and the kids seem happy and it's actually a book by our friend B and she was uh, one of the authors for that one. It's called Voyaging with Kids and it's a pretty good one uh, if you want to learn more and kind of see that it's possible. Uh, I don't know if I really answered like where we're gonna be in five to ten years, but I think sailing and diving. doing diving, <laughs> expeditionary style, crazy Patagonia, Arctic, that's kind of what I see. Do you think you'd take a cruising family to Patagonia? I wouldn't. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to raise kids on a boat. Yeah, for I sure. think it's a, a freaking. I don't know if all that. four of us with kids will be a good idea. But <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for that till we talk about Dallas people. We'll make that work. <laughs> I would say um, any of the cruising kids that I've met have been like you say, like average or above average, and definitely some of the most mature kids I've ever met that are already very like goal oriented at a young age and super just mature and able to talk and hang out with adults and have this huge skill set that is gonna play into the rest of their lives and just all around happy and being outside. So I definitely say it's a, it's a good way to bring kids up. Yeah, and well socialized. But yeah, very well socialized. It seems like cruiser families kind of stick together and then they have their little pack of kids that run around, you know, you see a little five-year-old boy blasting back like his hair blasting back he's just in the dinghy like romping around the anchorage and you're like why couldn't I have been like that when I was five years old like it looks amazing <laughs> I think that was a pretty good answer yeah I yeah. hope so <laughs> oh and uh, about Bean's book Voyaging with Kids uh, if you want to find that real quick just search on Salem Sailing Totem or Sailing with Totem and 
they have an awesome blog as well with a lot of information on what it's like to raise a family on board. They've been doing it for, well, they left Seattle the year before us. So they've been out for 10 years. With three kids? With three kids. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is a fun one. Short and sweet from Daniel Young. What essential oil does Mr. Brady closely resemble on day 17 of a 20 day passage? Blue, this one's for you. You sleep in the grub den. I would say, <laughs> like, the. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the consistency of argon oil, but with the argon. smell of, like, Burrito juice. <laughs> Ew. Ew. What? God. No. Let's say something nice. Uh, oh, burritos are good. That's true. Yeah, as long as you don't care, that's all that matters, really. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Interest you interesting but strange question. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now a serious one. Brian Rosinski, healthcare. Do you have insurance which covers you worldwide? Brady, health you, insurance? Do you have health insurance? I do not. Do you have health insurance? Nope. Do you have health insurance? No. Which probably means I don't have health insurance. Do you guys have health insurance? No. <laughs> None of us have health insurance. Jordan, Jordan's the only one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you, why? Because uh, I don't want to die. Why? Mine ran out um, <laughs> <laughs> before I could renew it. Um, and we also, I mean, I don't know, worth to mention is that we do have some money saved up in a savings account for Delos. Uh, it's about 20,000 US dollars um, that is just kept there for emergencies. Um, so I guess, can you say that we're self insured? Yeah, I mean, much. for certain things. Kind of. And I mean, most of these countries that we're visiting now, like healthcare is. If something happens, like if you break a leg, it's it's not crazy expensive. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on what happens to you, but um, I think we're in pretty good good shape. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> yeah. the thing is like the we found healthcare in most countries. Actually, I can't think of one where it's not to been of really high standards and fairly inexpensive, including doctors' visits for you know teeth. Uh, dental care. Yeah. Uh, we all got our skin checks done in South Africa. Uh, we got uh, dental cleaning, x-rays. Um, we got shots and immunizations and general checkups. And uh, the thing is, that that'll that'll get you far. Twenty grand will get you far in another country if you have an accident. What, yeah. what, hold on, I'm getting some sort of a oh, signal. So Brady got his LASIK done. In South oh, Africa. Brady got his LASIK done in South Africa, which turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one in eight thousand accident. But yeah, what, yeah. what happened, Brady? Uh, if anybody knows about LASIK, they cut a flap on your cornea. Um, they open it up. They shoot a laser beam inside, and then it fixes your vision, reshapes your cornea, and then they close the flap down. This eye went perfect, and this flap, uh, they have like suction on your eyeball and they cut the flap and uh, the suction came loose and ripped the flap off of my eye. It's like the whole top of my eye that protects the cornea came off. Uh, <laughs> it sounds so terrible. <laughs> when the doctor goes, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, you tell that story and it's referred to as my Africa eye, but it has nothing to do with where it was. It was uh, a uh, one in 10,000 chance that it happened and it does happen. It's called a... Uh, suction loss or something like that. <laughs> I don't know the exact term. It sucked, but anyways, that LASIK surgery, it turned out good. I can see good. Everything's okay. But it was a quarter of the price is what it would be somewhere else in the world. And it was the same facilities, top of the line, everything. I mean, Kaza got dental work done in Brazil and yeah. Namibia. And Root canal. And it was, it's yeah, like good and How cheap. much was it in, to do it in Namibia? A couple hundred dollars? Yeah, not even. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the deal is, uh, we're all fairly healthy. We don't have any problems. Um, what we're not covered for is like the crazy, uh, let's say that you unfortunately get cancer or a brain tumor or need open heart surgery or something like that. You know, I don't know that our disaster fund that Karen mentioned would cover so much of that. Yeah. Um, so for people who are really worried about that sort of thing, maybe consider uh, a high deductible plan. I know we looked into a yeah. few and they're they're actually not very expensive, so it wouldn't cover like day-to-day -day things like you, you break your, your leg or you know you need to go to the ER for this and that, but uh, if you do have a major catastrophe and need to be flown to your home country, uh, it could be something to consider. Yeah. We were also looking at 
Dan. Sure yeah, Divers just, Alert Network. Yeah, which covers you for like diving accidents and stuff like that. I want to say it's only like eighty dollars a year. Um, no. Well, there's there's like a membership fee to Dan, and then there's like a and then there's like the premium. I think in total it comes out to about like a hundred bucks or hundred twenty bucks for the year potentially like unlimited like having to go into the chamber like medical evacuation and then, like up to ten thousand but i know they have a yeah. plan as well yeah. that cover covers general travel general stuff, not yeah. just yeah. diving related so, i wanted to look into that but i just haven't done it yet yeah but okay here's a good one uh tim nutter are we going to see delos videos from your sojourn with 59 north sailing and is bjorn up in svalbard in the arctic yes Luke. Yes, definitely are. <laughs> um, Kirill is editing those right now, and me and Brady have been going a bit back and forth with him trying to get things laid out. Um, it's a lot of footage, like we shot so much for the, I don't know how many days we were on the boat, but we were up there for like three weeks, yeah. and we were just going crazy shooting, so um, we're trying to figure out the best way to lay that all out. But it is happening. Um, it's not really gonna be timeline in with the Delos episode timeline because it's just a beast of a project. Um, it's going to be sort of its own set of a, f of a few episodes, um, but we're really excited to show those and it's definitely going to be worth the wait. It's, yeah. It's definitely done in, in Delos style and there's similar things to a lot of the Delos episodes, but it is unique in its own way. We kind of filmed it in a different way, we're it's editing it in a different, different way, like it's, it's kind of its own little um, like test project I guess in a way mm -hmm. to see like what what it would be like to film an expedition like that and um, just play around with some some new things so it's really exciting it's coming yeah Soon. it's going <laughs> <laughs> we got Kirill on the case which yeah. is always gonna He's work out smashing well. it. <laughs> uh, all right so next one from Deb Gale uh, this is super exciting. The first time we'll be able to tune in since becoming patrons at the beginning of the year. Can't wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Deb. Sorry. The yeah. internet got us. Dang it. Uh, we love right watching up. the adventures with so many other folks. Uh, you've inspired us to learn to sail and buy a boat. We're planning on traveling extensively uh, when we quit work in four years, and we will. Only now we'll be doing it on a floating home. Uh, we're currently taking courses, navigation, VHF radio, and Vancouver, BC. We don't have a lot of opportunity to get on the water, mostly sailing annually with our bestie down under. So if you have any tips for other things we could do to ready ourselves, we have time and would appreciate advice from you well-traveled salty sailors. Big virtual hugs to the crew, you rock. Um, well, that's an awesome question. Uh, I remember thinking about this exact thing when I was dreaming about buying Bellows and taking off. Um, there's probably a thousand answers. I can just tell you what I did and what I found useful. Uh, in Seattle, the first thing I did was, there's this little place called the Center for Wooden Boats. And on weekends, like Saturdays, Sundays, you could go down and you could join their little club and you could take uh, basically dinghy courses. You could learn to sail a, a sailing dinghy. Uh, so I did that for a few months during the summer. Little tiny boats, they're like, you know, six to nine footers, and eventually I worked my way up to uh, being able to sail one of their keel boats, uh, which then really helped because right after that I bought a, a small Catalina 22 for a few grand. So I think any time on the water is good, even if it's a, a sailing dinghy, like sailing a small boat will teach you the feeling of the wind, like, like you just can't have in a bigger boat, um, and some truly important fundamentals of sailing. Uh, another thing that I did is I joined a race crew. So you guys said you're in Vancouver. Um, there's probably going to be a yacht club that has, you know, some summer regatta series or maybe into the fall. I'm not sure. I, I remember even in Seattle, we were racing during the winter. So maybe it's not too far off. But, you know, if you could uh, find the local club and finagle your way as rail meat onto a race boat, like you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn more than you ever thought was possible. Um, that was super important for me. I also chartered. Uh, after I had a little bit of experience and a credit card, I was able to <laughs> uh, just basically run a boat in the BVIs. I did a bare boat charter. You could do a captain charter. Take that out, see if you like it. I think that's something you could pretty easily do, and I, I don't think it's too expensive if you do it with a bunch of friends. 
Um, I so didn't I know think, you did that. So you've already been to BBA. Yeah, kind of. But I don't. I don't really count it because it was like a different phase of my life, and I don't really remember <laughs> yeah. that much. Past life. Yes, past life. <laughs> my, my before sailing life. Really. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything to add? I think that sums it up no. pretty good. I yeah. think um, we were talking about uh, crew finder is a good one. Like if you have, if you do have time to go on a trip and get on someone else's boat. There's a lot of different options for that, and everyone runs every boat differently, so the more boats you can get on, the more you'll learn things that you like or that you don't like. Um, but yeah. I'd definitely say the dinghies is a big one. I think that's something that people would overlook and think that... Because it's so it's, easy. We even did it in Brazil, yeah. in Sao Paulo, right? And I remember the first time I did it, like I learned a lot, even after we had crossed the Atlantic, because on Delos, you have someone at the helm, you have different people on different lines, and everyone kind of plays a specific role. And when you're sailing the dinghy by yourself, it's all you, and it's all like your hand motions that you're doing. So it's a really good way to kind of yeah, just lock in the fundamentals and get more comfortable with wind changes and, and all that stuff. So definitely not to be overlooked, I would say. Mm -hmm. I agree. Nice. Okay, next, next, next. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about yeah, some, let's do that let's, stuff. Like some some technical some technical stuff. Let's do the, uh, the boat work stuff. Okay. This is a pretty common question about the new batteries in the cooktop. We've got three different questions here. Warren DeMars, Ronnie, Ronnie Rocky Road, <laughs> and Robert Place. Uh, they're all sort of the same, but I'll just read uh, one of them here. Hello Delos, thank you for your marvelous videos, the amount of work that you put into them, uh, and the editing shows and quality results. Oh, thank you. Uh, and thank you for letting us all share in your lives. It's what sets you apart from everyone else. I'm curious about the electrical system now that you've changed your cooktop and added an oven. You recently cooked a turkey for Thanksgiving, which is true, uh, which would <laughs> seem to be a pretty good test. Did the system meet your expectations or even exceed them? When you installed the lithium batteries, you stated in your video that according to your calculations, the batteries would have more capacity, plus would charge at a faster rate. Has this proven to be true? Are you still considering an electric motor to replace the diesel? Or is that possibly a project for the next Delos too? Thank you again for all that you do. I would love to sail with you sometime. Let's do Hawaii. <laughs> Let's do Hawaii. Cool. Uh, well, okay. So yeah, we installed the lithium system right before we hauled out in Grenada. And we've been back in the water how long? Two months? Not Three? quite two months? Three? A few months anyway. <laughs> Give or take. Uh, I'll let, who wants to, why don't you talk about it first? Because maybe we all have a different perspective. How do you like cooking on the induction stove? It took a little bit of time to get used to. Like we've been cooking on gas for so long. And uh, <coughs> and I think in the beginning, it was a little bit of trial and error uh, for sure. But we bought some, okay, the best pans and pots we could mm -hmm. find in Grenada, <laughs> which wasn't a huge selection. Uh, but we got some good ones, and I feel like now it, it's working good. Uh, it's think two the, burners. Talk about the problem in the beginning. Yeah, I mean in the beginning it was like, it, we had like a non-slip kind of silicone pad on top that was supposed to keep the pots and pans from sliding. Um, that one, I don't, I don't actually know exactly what was the problem with it, but I think having that one on top just it threw a bunch of errors all the time, like it overheated all the time and stuff. So we removed that one. It was just like a thing on top, right? So we just removed it, put the pans like it's supposed to be, straight on top, and... It was it, like a whole yeah. new stove. It was like <laughs> flipping a switch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... I think the problem was that the pad was like this thick, and I think it was keeping the stove that far above, or the, the pot or pan that far above the stove. Uh, which was not good for the induction. But once we pulled that yeah. thing off and just started putting the pots right on there, it worked like a champ. It works really what do you guys good. think? So I think, I think it works well. You have to get used to it a little bit. Um, but just thinking about like how you want to cook what and what pan for six people, it's a lot of food. Um, so just planning ahead for that. And we use our we're using the oven like 10 times more than we ever did with the propane oven. Yeah. So we're cooking kind of in a different way and cooking different things. Turkey! Um, yeah, but once you get used to it, I really like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think a, 
I think it's awesome. And the reason why I really like it is because I no longer have to search out and fill propane, which is cool. <laughs> uh, it generates way less heat in the galley. That's a big yeah. one, actually. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, especially if you use a pressure cooker. So I think a pressure cooker coupled with an induction stove on a boat so is like a killer idea. Yeah. Um, but the only way it's possible is because of our new batteries. Because of the lithium batteries. Yeah. Uh, so the I, I we've actually I've run a few numbers. Uh, and we can now take about 350 amp hours out of these batteries, which is almost 3.3 times what we could take out of the other batteries. Yeah. So we've basically converted our eight old lead acid batteries. It's almost like having 25 or 26 batteries now. It's crazy. Yeah. And the weight is less than a half. These weigh like 13 kilos each, so that's helped us like balance the boat a little bit better. Um, for sure, they're charging faster. Uh, I've noticed that the amount of power we're getting into the batteries now is about 3.7 kilowatt hours per day just from solar. Uh, so if you add the wind, if it's windy, we're getting close to like four kilowatt hours per day in power. So I think we've realized about a 30% efficiency increase. It's pretty almost, pretty almost. It's pretty close the same to having to having added another solar panel for yeah. us. Um, I'm not sure that our generator time has gone up that much. Uh, I haven't actually run the numbers on that, but I need to. But we're able to skip a day or two uh, if the batteries are being charged by the solar. Um, so they're, they're topping it up. We're not conserving power at all. We're running laptops, we're running our wireless network, we're charging batteries and gimbals and drones. Uh, sometimes we forget and leave the inverter on all night. Uh, I've made bread. I made the Thanksgiving dinner, so I baked a turkey, which means the oven was on for four hours. Four hours, yeah. Uh, I cooked stuffing with bacon. Uh, we did sweet potatoes with a marshmallow topping in the oven. Uh, I baked bread in the bread maker and Swedish then we did the Swedish chocolate cake and right as we were doing the Swedish chocolate cake like the from having the oven on like so long that day the batteries were drained yep. and then I had to turn on the generator for like the last 30 minutes. What's so really a full Thanksgiving meal. But it, it was it's pretty amazing Thanksgiving. and that's a full, yeah, that's Thanksgiving, full Thanksgiving, meal Thanksgiving meal for six people. Yeah. Six people. I would imagine off if, batteries. if you yeah off, off yeah. the lithium and I would imagine if you were cooking for two people um, it would be that much easier. Uh, we're also using the hot water kettle to boil water. I've been making waffles all the time with the electric waffle maker. <laughs> um, we just bought a toaster. It's it's going very well. It's going pretty well. I think the coolest thing too is they can take the the batteries can take a shitload of charge. So you can really when you turn the chargers on, they pump like what was it running out the other day like 200 and something amps. You can top them. from almost nearly flat like. 85% drain, so if we take them down to only 15% of capacity, let's say, we can top them up in two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, whereas to do that with the old batteries, it would take like, I'm gonna say between five and six hours. Yeah. So that's where the balance is. They, they ch you, you use a lot more power, but you're running the system more efficiently because you can pump a lot of power into them and they'll just take, take, take until they're fully charged and then you yeah. shut it off. I think overall it's going very, very well. The one thing that for me is tough is it's a 1500 watt unit, so you can't put both burners on high at the same time with this specific unit is, is what this one is doing. So you have to kind of plan like what Blue was saying, you have to plan your meals a little bit so you can't have both going at high at the same time. But that's easy to fix with, with an upgrade with the newer version or something yep. like that. And we only have a 3000 watt inverter, so we do have to watch how many things we're running at the same time. Yeah. But once again, it's easily. Overall, the pros are huge. Yep, I think it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, uh, you can go to svdls.com forward slash lithium, and you will see the links to the system that we put on board. Uh, if you're in the UK, uh, just search for uh, Justin's company, Transporter Energy, and he will hook you up. If you're anywhere else in the world besides uh, uh, the EU, you can uh, search on Dragonflight Energy or Battleborn Batteries and go yep. directly to the source.
Good so, stuff. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Do you want to talk about Dallas 2.0? Sure. Let's do some Dallas 2.0. Dallas 2.0. Let's She's see. anchored right behind us. She didn't even see it. <laughs> uh, wow, we've got one, two, three, four, five. A lot of questions lot about Dallas 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Lecker, Jeremy McLeod, mm -hmm. Richard Whiting, Mike Murphy, Annalise Croman, and Michael Coors. Uh, well, I'll take uh, Richard Whiting first. I'm curious about the next vessel and about the plan for high latitude expectations. As a member of the OCC, which is the Offshore Cruising Club, I'm quite interested in that form of sailing adventure. The Milk Run is quite saturated now with so many cruisers on that highway. Your adventures in the Indian Ocean and the South Atlantic set you up for more high latitude adventures. So will you keep the ML or commission a purpose-built vessel for this next adventure? Or will this even happen? <laughs> uh, Interesting. Anybody you want to take that one? Um, I mean, it's it's gone. We've gone back and forth so many times about what we want, what we want to do, what we're doing for the future. Over the past year, we've talked to how many different designers? Seven or eight different actual naval architects. We've talked I think to more. even more than that. We've definitely talked to seven or eight yards that actually build boats. We've gone on a long path of talking about um, a big monohull made out of aluminum that can bash through ice and kind of take anything. And what, about a month and a half ago, we met some guys that are on a trimaran and <laughs> the spark lit up in us and we went on this trimaran binge of talking to researching. designers and researching Learning. and figuring it out. So it's still going. There's nothing being built as of right now, but we're, we're constantly talking. We talk about it a lot. Every every day we're talking about oh Dell is too photo this and that, but it is something that we need to take time with. It's not a uh, it's not something we rush into and just yeah like like you say buy off the shelf kind of thing. What we want is not something you can just buy from somebody that's already making boats. So it's a big process of finding what works for us and the resources that are involved for making a project like that happen and the time involved to making a project happen. It's big things that we're not in a huge rush to do right now, right? Yeah, it's it's just such an enormous project. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's something that we're all super excited and passionate about, but we Definitely. don't feel rushed to jump into anything because we're still, I've learned so much about compromises in boat design and what each can do and you know what the associated costs are for, let's say building a 65 foot aluminum expedition yacht versus a 75 foot like cruising trimaran uh you know I mean, the beam on that thing <laughs> <laughs> we just looked at this one design it is like 71 feet length overall but the beam on the deck is 25 feet wide the overall beam is With 57 the, feet 50, wide. so it's it's wider than delos is long so there's all sorts of options but we're we're fucking dreaming big, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk at all about like why the idea for Delos 2.0 even came about? Like why not just keep sailing Delos for the next 10 years? I think it's different for every one of us. I can, I can speak from my perspective. Like I've now owned Delos for 10 years this year. Uh, I think I'm barely starting to figure out all of her ins and outs. I've pretty much gone through everything on the boat. And, uh, you know, you come to a point where you, you want to continue to learn and to grow and evolve. And I think for us to evolve our project, both in terms of like sailing and the type of filming we want to do, like going to high latitude destinations, going back to the Pacific Ocean, Karen's never seen, uh, you know, like French Polynesia, Cook Islands, like Marquesas, Tumotus. Uh, we want to go to Japan. There's all sorts of crazy things. Yeah. Um, we want to do it, and we want to do it in a like kind of a over the top way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. to bring more people, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Delos is kind of like now we're six people, and I mean she is maxed out. And I think yeah. just to be able to have more people on board comfortably and involve more people in this project would be amazing and to have them actually on the boat would be a dream yeah. in my eyes so 
That's and a huge thing too. I think most importantly for all of us too is that we do it with our our vibe and we do it our way. Uh, yeah. Which I think 100%. means it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long term project and it's gonna be something that we invest our our heart, souls, and blood and tears into. Timing, timing is something that's really important for us, and things have to feel right at the right time for them to happen. And it, everything so far has felt right, and we'll know when the time is right to the next step to go forward. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. I'm sure it brought a lot, a lot more questions. <laughs> yeah. Try, Brian. What? Well. Uh, yeah. Flashback to the. Uh, Catamaran versus monohull video that we did with Arthur and his closing statement, which yeah. was, "If I were to do this again, I'd do it on a big 90-foot trimaran." <laughs> <laughs> you're like, "Oh, what?" So <laughs> we're, we're keeping our options open. Um, okay, are there any other Delos 2.0 stuff that we didn't cover? Maybe I'll read through these while somebody's answering another question. Do you want to talk about? This one, Brady, from Dared Gladstone. How's your liquor production going? Is it still alive and well? And something about an yeah. oak barrel from someone, too? From uh, William Gross? Senor Gross. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't run the still in the past month or so, but we've done it back this season, and it's still going good. We actually used that alcohol that we made for our Bloody Marys on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. so we're still producing. Um, not as much as we used to because we're in the Caribbean and rum is really cheap and you can get it everywhere. So it's kind of like a, a trade-off, but we're still, we're still definitely doing it. We had a bit of a mishap on our last sale. We have the big fermentation. It's like a 25 liter jug of like smelly fermented sugar water and yeast that's bubbling. And we were healing over pretty bad and a, a little piece of a, a camera attachment. What was it? It was uh, Jordan's intervalometer. Jordan's intervalometer, <laughs> which is some kind of camera. <laughs> it it uh, slid underneath the nozzle that you open to release the fermentation from the tank, and it filled our bilges with, what, like 10 liters of smelly, nasty, yeasty water. Yeah. Uh, we haven't run the still since then. We've cleaned the bilges out, though, <laughs> and we still have a little bit left that we're going to run through soon. So, yeah, the, the Turbo 500 still from Still Spirits is still kicking ass and we're still experimenting with it. That wooden barrel that we put rum in a long time ago. It started leaking, I think. Yeah, you know how yeah. they put the metal bands on the, on the wooden rusted. barrels? It <laughs> rusted away and all the rum leaked out. We went to get it out one day and there was no rum. Bilge. No rum inside, so. It's a shame. How big yeah. was it? It's like this big. It's like four oh, or five okay. liters? Yeah. Like stainless Somebody steel. Somebody gave it to us as a gift. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Next question. Okay. This is one from Paul Eugenio. Question, how do I choose a boatyard for a layover? Are there places or regions to avoid altogether? And how do you fully prepare the boat, strip it down, hide, relocate valuables? Well, how about Karen? You just worked on this video. It's coming out next Friday, right? What? Yeah. what, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what any of us are doing. <laughs> what did I work on? This, you did the Bye Bye Delos video. Yeah? Yeah, this is... Uh, how how we hide things. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our day. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. So when you're thinking about where to put your boat for the hurricane season... Oh, that's... Uh, okay. What I was trying to get Kaz to okay. say no, no, is no, that no, the no, video is no. coming out next Friday, but we're going yeah. to talk about a few things. Yeah. No, but I mean, I think just thinking about like a few different things, like a main factor for us was the insurance we have for Delos, for example. We needed to keep her lower than, what was it? 12 degrees, 7 minutes, yeah. which is the center of Grenada. Directly. So we had to choose a boat yard that was south of that. Uh, you want, I mean, we just looked at a few different ones and yeah, just pros and cons and kind of what. Um, I can't remember what we discussed. I, I mean, think what, like what's, what's important is, yeah, like staying out of the hurricane belt is probably pretty important, especially if you're going to take the boat out of the water and be on the hard. Um, Grenada's out of the hurricane belt, so to speak. They don't see many storms, and they also strap the boat down. They have these big concrete blocks that they bury in the ground, and your boat gets chained onto them, and they strap it down. So that's something that I know we were excited to hear when we when we decided to haul out at Spice Island Marine in Grenada. 
Um, but also in the other places in the world, it's just we just talk to people, right? Yeah. Just hear about, like talk, read, read like different things, and just see and like is it safe? Is it good? Yeah, safety, right? Would yeah. be like a huge one. Any place close to where a hurricane might pass, like Grenada does get hurricanes, it has in the past. So when we put Delos up on the hard, our main focus was to, yes, find a good place, uh, yes, make, put her in a hurricane cradle, but also, in general, reduce windage. So we removed all the sails, um, we removed the solar panels, we removed the wind generators, we put the paddle boards downstairs, we took everything off the rails, we took the dodger, the awning down, yeah. um, everything below decks, all sheets tidied up, uh, it took us about two days of mm -hmm. hard labor to put her away. Yeah. Um, luckily, nothing rolled through and we were fine. Uh, the yard that you stay in is going to have some great recommendations. Some yards I've been to, they actually bury the boat in, in like a, you know, the, the, the keel goes down underground, right? I've seen some places in Fiji, in the Tuamotos, uh, where else? Tonga, where yeah. they actually lift the boat out, they dig a hole with a backhoe and they lower you right into it. Um, to put your keel into it now. Put your keel into it, which is, which is cool. Uh, so, yeah. Vacuum seal everything on the boat, hope it doesn't mold, mm -hmm. and save whatever food you can that way. I don't know if it helped or we just didn't have the problem, but we left out little things of vinegar that was supposed to prevent mold from going when it evaporates. Yep. Yep. We didn't have any mold. Traps everywhere, bug traps. You hooked up that fan. I hooked up a solar powered air circulation system. Mm -hmm. So a little solar panel that we put on the floor of the cockpit, uh, run to a spare inverter, uh, run to a fan that just, that I bought at the hardware store for like, it was actually a bathroom exhaust fan. So it only took, I think 20 watts and it just continually for four months just pumped air from outside into the boat. Yeah. Which I think is cool. It worked pretty well. Everything was good when we came back. It was beautiful. Like there wasn't any, right? Any issues? No problems. Um, Nothing. Well, except the toilets broke, but they always broke. <laughs> so. uh, okay. Michael Langlois. Lang Lang Langlois? Langlois? I can't pronounce that name, sorry. Uh, my question is about finances. I realize you guys are the most financially successful, or among the most financially su successful sailing channels on YouTube, and I was wondering if you could discuss how all the members of the boat share in that success. I know that all of you have skills, video editing, photography, etc., and you have help from others not on the boat, so how is it all working if you're making as much money per episode as has been reported? Why don't you recover those damn cushions in the galley? <laughs> Yikes, those are looking pretty skeezy, Michael in Miami. Um, These cushions? <laughs> not those cushions, no, no, the, down ones, the ones oh. down there in the salon. Yeah, uh, well, Michael, you'd be happy to know that we steam clean the mm -hmm. cushions mm -hmm. in Grenada when we did our haul out. Uh, they're not new, but they're pretty fresh. Yeah, they're all right. They turned out we cleaned everything. Um, about the money stuff, well, I can say that the numbers on Patreon are probably a, a gross overestimation of what one would actually get. Uh, of course, there's the fees and stuff that, that Patreon takes out of that that is sort of built into that number. Uh, there's also the fact that uh, most people uh, tend to support uh, not every video that we put out per month, which is awesome and amazing, and we're happy to have uh, any of the, su the support that we get. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. But at the end of the day, uh, it's it's. We're, we're, we're not rolling in money addresses. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think, I think uh, it, it, like you see a number and you think, whoa, man, that's a crazy amount of money if you didn't have anything, any expenses or anything to do. And Delos, I mean, a boat is expensive to take care of. There's four of us, often six of us living on board. So, you know, that goes to paying for all of our food on board, all of our alcohol on board, everything that we do, plus the repairs on the boat, um, all the equipment we use. I mean, we're also, yeah, there's like yeah. production costs. There's production like costs for all of our stuff. And camera equipment. And Everybody who sails on Delos now sails for free. Yep. So their expenses are paid. Um, food is paid. Drinks are paid. We occasionally do dinners out. Yeah. We mostly eat on the boat to save money. Um, keep the boat up. So, I mean, the rest of the money that's left over, we put 10% into like a future projects kind of fund that we have, which that's is probably going to go towards Delos 2.0. 
Um, another 10% goes to charity? Another 10% goes to charity, so we have an account that we have 10% uh, of everything goes into... Oh, fish is jumping. 10% <laughs> of everything uh, goes into that account for charities that we find along the way, uh, people we want to help out along the way, and then, yeah. I think the key thing is we do this because we love it, and yeah. we like sharing the adventure, and uh, I think if you were to do this for money, uh, I personally think there's a lot easier ways to make more money and work less than sailing and putting videos on YouTube, honestly. It is yeah. I think the a full-time and a half job. The yeah. thing that's hard, like it may not seem like a lot of work if you're just watching the videos, but from our perspective, like, or anybody that owns a boat or, or has lived on a boat, like boats are a lot of work in general. Yeah. Filming is like a job in itself. Editing is a job in itself. And then living with all those people at the same time is a job. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. But that's most important to us is, is having that kind of lifestyle, not the money side of it. Right. It's a lifestyle business. And I think it's also cool that the people that work with us on the project, like still Kirill helping us to edit, Lisa helping us to edit, uh, some of our other friends that are helping us with various things, even our dad, like he helps us answer yeah. the the Facebook messages. Papa S V Delos. Papa S V Delos. If any of you have been answering my Papa S V Delos, he's in there cranking out messages. Yeah. Our dad was going to get uh, to to you know he's on retirement, he's on Social Security, and uh, he was going to go get a part time job to make uh, a little bit of extra cash. And we're like, well, Dad, you know, we, we have people helping us with this project, and why don't you help us answer you Facebook answer messages? Yeah. And so he gets employed. Uh, other people get get employed and they're able to do a cool job and make a living on this incredible project, which I'm I'm really proud about. Yeah, uh, that's something yeah, that's that, that really cool. warms my heart is uh, to be able to you know have yeah. everybody working together and sort of s share things and and spread spread it around a little bit. Um, did I hit everything on that? I think that makes sense. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lifestyle business that you must love. Don't, thinking about doing this. Don't do it for money. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of other things to do for money. Uh, let's see. I could come a jeweler. Brian and Kaza. I would, if I was doing it for the money, I would have stayed in software. Yeah. I would have way stayed in software because I would have made, I would have made way more money and, and ended up doing it. Or if you're sailing for work, like charter, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, Nancy Jobbins. Brian and Kaza. Any wedding plans in the works? Ooh. Will you be getting married in Sweden or in the States? Have you set a date, live stream or private? Live stream! Live stream! <laughs> pay per view! <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, we've been discussing if we don't have any set plans as of yet. We've been discussing a little bit back and forth. It kind of, I don't know, it changes a little bit every day, I think. <laughs> I mean, we just kind of looked into some islands here, like what if we just get married? The, the, on the next <laughs> island that we go to, where it's easy and convenient, we should just do it. Yeah. What? Something small. <laughs> <laughs> I was originally supposed to marry you guys. And then, <laughs> and then the other out. day, we just told Brady that now we've decided to go to Vegas and elope. Uh, and then we said, no, we're not going to Vegas. We're going to go to a mountain retreat and just do it at a courthouse. <laughs> and so we have no idea. Yeah. Wait, were you guys really considering Ve Vegas? That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it was a serious joke. Oh, one of those. Okay. So we don't know as of yet, but it's going to be small and it's going to be lovely and it's going to be good. I don't think you will be live streaming it. Uh, no. <laughs> Probably not. We try not to make a spectacle of ourselves, I guess. Yeah. In that way. Uh, we'll see. It will be good and. I don't know what else to say about that. We don't have so much. It's plans. coming soon. You'll know when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Brandon Williams. This is more of a request, but here's my vision. A few years from now, at the place of your choosing, you guys buy a small marina liveaboard resort, aka a sweet cruiser land base like at Torpedinho's place in Brazil, episode 189. You guys have inspired so many people to get out cruising who are new to the whole scene. It would be so awesome to have a Dallas land base where like-minded people could learn, share new ideas, organize caravans for cruising to new places, and have a safe, fun place for repairs or help with boat upgrades. A holy sanctuary literally like the island of Delos. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. I would be happy and honored to help run the place if it ever sounds like something you would want to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That has that's Brady awesome. next to yeah. it. Yeah, um, that's something we always talk about. Like One thing we always continue to bring up 
all the time is balance in life and part of that is having a base on land and if we can incorporate like the Delos vision and the Delos tribe into something some kind of base on land it's perfect I think every island I, I go to we are looking for every island we go to we're looking at spots being like oh could that be a cool spot for our Delos compound we actually found this cool spot in Beckway called the moon hole and there's these houses up in the hills that are like made out of stones and it's not really a marina or a place where other boats would come but I don't know we're always thinking of that sort of thing so if you guys know of any places that look cool let us know yeah and uh well, who's, who's gonna run it for us Brandon Williams Brandon Williams you're hired <laughs> keep in mind how we doing on time you're about an hour we're about an hour what, what do you say we do uh one, one or two more and yeah, yeah. call it a that call it a day. Um, Should we do this? Uh, okay, so this is from Chris Dory. Aloha, dear Delosians. Living a high octane life full of adventure while mostly in close quarters with a handful of people, albeit fabulous ones, making effing, I'm going to say fucking fresh videos about it all and thus having your life in the spotlight of your own design seems like a lot on a human, which is absolutely true. So, what are each of your methods for avoiding burnout and nourishing your hearts and souls? Very poignant question because we've been talking about this <laughs> a lot lately. I think we... Hmm. Like Brady, you said balance, you know? And yeah. I think it's super important. And, and sometimes I, th I feel like we do really well, and sometimes I feel like we maybe don't do so well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think we all learn as we go and, and we all find different ways to deal with like living with a lot of people, working a lot and just having being away from family, like all of these things that might be, I don't know, a little challenge. Um, I know for myself, like I need time for to just be with myself and to do stuff like just have my own time and when sometimes when everybody goes and do stuff I just stay behind and I stay on Delos I cook like a dinner for myself and just watch a movie and that's all I need <laughs> sometimes yeah so that's that's something that I do and it took a while to like be okay with that like not going with on all these fun things all the time but I think it's important to just listen to yourself and and just accept that other people have maybe different feelings and views. Mm -hmm. What do you got, Blue? Um, I, yeah, I, I think everyone has their own way of like finding what works for them. I know for me, like I really like the time in the mornings. I like to like wake up and do yoga, and like everyone else is like sleeping or not out of bed yet, and it's just really like calming for me. Um, and I've been reading a lot more lately, just like taking time to myself to like decompress. Um, and I think like not pushing it too much, like if you're really burned out on something, we, we get, we edit a lot with the episodes and I think sometimes you just get to a point where you can't like do it anymore. And just taking the time to like go paddle boarding or give yourself a night off or something, actually it goes a really long way. Um, and I think that's something that's all, we're all trying to get better at. Yeah, yeah like even this morning, uh, you know, we there was this cool opportunity to take the boat around and film some guys free diving. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I told everybody, I was just like, you know what, I'm just not feeling it. You know, I feel like we've been super busy from, you know, going on adventures and filming from 8 a.m. till, you know, 5 p.m. every day. And I was just like, you know what guys, I just don't feel it. I, I think I'd rather just sleep in and take the morning to catch up on some other things. And everybody was cool. They're like, okay, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Everybody woke up. They took the boat. I slept, and it wasn't a thing. So thanks for that. <laughs> that helps. I think that's really important is is knowing what your personal limit is, and when you need time for yourself uh, to take it. Like, and that's if everybody else is working, you can't be forced to work just because everybody else is working. It's okay to go paddle boarding. It's okay to take some time to yourself to recharge your own batteries because everybody's kind of different. I think being m more current on footage, like what we talked about earlier, is is really nice for us because now we can have more time to be super creative with what we're doing. And we can, whereas before we would have 
so much back footage we just constantly wanted to edit to, to kind of catch up but now we're in the place where if we want to take a day or something to go and film a specific mission and release something alongside the episodes in place of an episode like it's really cool to be able to do that and i think that takes a lot of the stress away from us so i'm looking forward to doing more stuff like that yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure Sweet. I think that's it. Yeah. There was. I, I got one more. Yeah. Which one is that about? Uh, from Doug Ackerman, SV Caribou. Uh, I'd be curious about how yeah. you run video production from a boat. Do you have a network with a few terabytes of NAS stashed somewhere to keep all the video? Do you have a rotation of who edits each episode? How much time do you typically spend editing? Lose on. Well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all we all film and we all edit. So, as far as rotation goes, usually whatever video is up next, whoever finishes their video will take that on, um, with exceptions. I think there's definitely certain places that we go or certain stories that we film that, that we individually feel like really connected with. Um, and so we'll kind of just say like, I really want to edit this or like, I'm not feeling as keen on this and someone else is. So um, I think something that's really cool about the Delos project and that I think is rare um, in creative businesses is that like you actually get to work on like what you what you want to work on for the most part um, as you should because then you'll do a better job yeah, yeah yeah so like and you know we talk about it all the time we're always talking about our episodes with each other and throwing stuff around like should I include this like how should I do this and like the one thing that's always consistently said amongst us is like do what inspires you like yeah maybe we filmed that and it's really cool but if you don't want to if you're not inspired to edit it like don't put it in or you know if you want to focus on this story do that if you want to film this go film it and that's something that i really appreciate and i think that's really crucial to keeping that like creativity cup full because um, when you're working on stuff you don't want to work on it drains out real quick um as far as running the stuff on board. I mean, we have a plethora of cameras. T tell us what you did when we came back from our birding adventure yesterday. What was the first thing you did last night? First thing I did last night. After every night, day of filming, really. <laughs> yeah, we all come home. Well, we all shoot on kind of our own cameras that we like shooting on. So coming back and dropping footage to the SAN. Um, the SAN is. Uh, the NAS. It's a network attached yeah. storage. Western Digital EX2100. So you just connect your computer to it over Wi-Fi and upload the files. <laughs> but um, yeah, we all have different cameras that we like like shooting on. So I shoot on, I shoot Canon, I have a 5D Mark IV. These guys shoot on the Panasonic GH5s. Um, we have, you know, Kaza, I feel like you really like shooting with the GoPro. It's easy to like clamp, st clamp stuff, put it under water. Um, we have a few, a couple different 360 cameras we've been playing with, like the GoPro. Um, what's the fusion? The fusion, yeah. Um, Drench brought their brought a crazy Sony A7S with a Ronin, and then they brought like a, a 360 3D camera that we've been playing with. Uh, what's it called? Vent views. Views. Um, so yeah, everyone just kind of has their own style that they like to shoot with, um, and different things that they like to shoot. So we just put it all in the sand, and then when it's your time to look at an episode, you kind of just look through everything and decide what you think the story is. Um, which I think is, is cool too, because it's being shot from a bunch of different perspectives, and it's being edited from a different perspective. So like, you know, me and Brian might take the look at the same folders and edit like totally different episodes, because we just have a different, we see different stories and different things, or want to focus on different aspects. Um, but definitely a lot of collaboration. Like I know a lot of times me and Brady will be each working on our own episode and then we hit a wall and we'll just swap episodes and we'll each yeah. finish each other's episode. And that's super helpful because we all have different strengths and I know you guys switch episodes back and forth and... Um, and how, how, do you, how do we do that? Do we all by chance happen to use the same editing software? We do, we use Adobe <laughs> Premiere Pro. Um, Great program with some Cute frustrating bugs. bugs, but you can do a lot with it. And um, yeah, just pass stuff back and forth on hard drives. I mean, we talk about it every single day. I'd say yeah. like, hey, I'm, I need this from you, or you know, what do you think about this, I or think can you watch this? Or we're really lucky to have is bouncing stuff off each other because yeah. 
if you put like what do we say that an episode is like one to two hours of work per minute of footage edited. I'd like say two to three. Right? Two to by three. By the time you're all done. So yeah. like if you have a 30 minute episode, that's 70 hours of work that can go into I that think, episode. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's pretty, that's the way that we say, yeah. edit. So if you're pumping out one of those every week, that is quite a bit of work. It is, and that's when, when you when you get to that wall and you've put in 60 hours or whatever on the same episode and you're just like, all right, I'm done with it. And the fact that we can pass it on to each other and have somebody else put the extra, the last 10 hours into it to finish it up is something really cool. Because a lot of times I'm like, all right, I'm, I don't even want to look at that thing anymore, you know? So it's really, yeah, it's good to be able to do that. Yeah, and Carol and Lisa are editing yeah. too, and they'll send us projects and then we add stuff and finish them and everything. So we definitely... Have a good, good team. Good, good team. team, yeah. That's awesome. I think that, that answered answer that question. Cool. Yeah. I think we nailed that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, is there any? I, I've got a few closing things to say. Okay. Unless anybody has anything else they really want to add. Go ahead, bro. I might add okay. something once uh, I got, I got some nerd stats to throw at you. Uh, this might surprise you guys, but the most, the device that's most viewed to watch our videos now is smart TVs. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. So. Uh, that's cool because it means that people are watching uh, in, in you know, groups in their living room up on a wall, which I think is, makes me very proud to know that we're making something of uh, like a high enough quality that somebody would actually want to watch us in that fashion, right? Yeah, that's uh, huge. That's good. The, the downfall of that is that when you watch it on your smart TV, you don't necessarily uh, like or comment on the video, which is a major thing that... Uh, YouTube uses to see uh, engagement. Yeah. So we get a very high watch time and we get the views, but we lose out of the engagement. So there's always, yeah. there's always trade offs right there, but I'm totally happy with that. Um, but if people do have a chance to uh, like and comment on the videos, uh, it really helps us more than you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. The other thing is only four out of 10 people that watch our videos are subscribed. Did you really? No, so I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense by the views. Only forty of our views come from subscribers. Yeah, because you, it's hard to subscribe if you're watching from a TV as well. Or I, I don't know. Maybe we've just been doing it for a long time that people just watch our videos on Friday. Yeah. Uh, and so they haven't subscribed. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> we've actually never asked people to subscribe. We actually before. never asked people to subscribe. Years, so so subscribe. <laughs> um, that's. I think that's it. Is there anything else? I think that's it. I hope. Yeah. I hope you guys get this video today which is Friday um, if not it'll be tomorrow and I hope you have a good Saturday uh, have a wonderful weekend have a wonderful weekend thank you guys peace for being awesome from Dominica thank you yeah, guys. peace and love to you guys and we'll talk to you soon and when we do have good internet eventually we will do a proper live yeah that would yeah. be nice <laughs> thank you guys bye, bye.